I'm the reason you turned to the dark side, Ian. And I'm Live Long and Prosper. I'm Ray. <laughs> you can't say that on this episode. Okay, so the <laughs> reason why we're doing that is because this episode of Costume Couture is the top 10 Star Wars looks for side characters. Yeah, so that's the people that, you know, obviously aren't Luke, Leia, Padme, Anakin, Han. Yeah. Everyone who has, like, a billion action figures and a lot of lines. These are characters that had very minimal to do with the plot or just looked cool as kind of background people that got fleshed out in comic books or side stories or Clone Wars, Rebels, whatever it is. We have chosen these because they still have an immense amount of detail to them. They were very eye-pleasing. We love the photos behind them. Some of these are more popular than others. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we're, we're hoping you like them too. Let's kick it off. <laughs> All right. So the first one on our list is Bail Organa. He has appeared in multiple films now, uh, Rogue One, as well as Revenge of the Sith. But that is the one that I chose because he looks like a regal X-Men. Because yeah. <laughs> the X on his chest? Exactly. <laughs> but look at that beautiful blue drapery. Yeah. It's it's a front cape. It, it, I do. I like the front cape. I like the front cape. It's very, you know, those colors are the colors of Alderaan. Um... And so he wears them proudly. He, remember, is the king of Alderaan as yes, well as the senator. We don't actually senator. call him King Organa either, which no, we is don't. weird. But uh, he is. He is the yeah. king of Organa. And He's the king of Organa? <laughs> He's the king of Alderaan. He's, He's the king, king of Oregano. <laughs> He's king Organa of Alderaan. There we go. Guys. <laughs> this is going to be a long episode. Yep. Stay tuned. Anyway. Yeah, so... This costume is just really intense, yeah. it's dramatic, it is regal, and it is authoritative. So he can go off to battle, he could go to a senate hearing, he can, you know, refuse food to peasants, whatever he wants to do. I don't think he's that kind of king. I don't think so either, I just, you know, that's what kings do, right? Yes, in normal cases, but I don't think in Bale's case. Okay. But yeah, uh, uh, Trisha Bigger designed this, she designed all the costumes and looks for the prequel trilogy, so one, two, and three. Um, yeah, this she is did a great job. this is gorgeous. This is his like Senate hearing look. Yeah, he has a few of the looks throughout the film, but this I think is the one that stands out the most. Absolutely. My next pick was Admiral Holdo. Now she has a huge fan base. She does since the Last Jedi debuted. But let's not forget, she's a side character. She lived through only part of the film, and she gets one look, which is very odd. She's the very first character to have a funky colored hair, something she that is. wasn't natural. And in this world, we still don't know if that's like just part of the birth or if that is an aesthetic it's choice. It's a dyed. It is I dyed. I Yeah. I imagine that was the case. But, you know, we do, we're operating in a world full of aliens and fantastical sci-fi creatures. So yeah. it's not out of the realm for me to think that, you know, she was born that way. Uh, the outfit, if you didn't know, it was a beautiful draped gray dress. With, not lavender. It's not, not purple. It's not. It's definitely Lan gray. Annie Leibovitz did that when she was photoshopping people. It's not yes, purple. It's not purple. Uh, her hair is purple. She has this beautiful halo kind of headband that rests in the back. Yes. It is very symbolic of her sacrifice later mm -hmm. on. It's kind of cool how they added that in. Michael Kaplan did the outfits for both Force Awakens and Last Jedi. Yes. I especially love her Wonder Woman bracers. Her, her, yeah, her ka -ching, ka -ching. They are very Wonder Woman. They're and very I beautiful. say that with as much respect as possible because we all want to be Wonder Woman. Yes. So I imagine that uh, this is a another outfit that is authoritative. Mm -hmm. It's aggressive, but it's also very demure and regal. Yep. So she had space jewelry, which is yes. fun fact I think that Carrie Fisher wanted a lot of the ladies to have was space jewelry and she kind of she kind of demanded it. it and they're like yep we'll give everyone space jewelry <laughs> everyone so, gets space jewelry it was a great costume i loved it uh you know it's super it's, it's simple it's very simple it's not embroidered anywhere it's just a simple kind of draped fabric but um it's worn well it's you know i've seen lots of cosplayers now start doing haldo because of it yes um our friend luna flair Debuted her Haldo at Planet Comic Con, which was stunning. There's there's quite a few Haldos out there. Yes. Farasha has a really great one. So go look up Luna. Go look up Farasha. Give them some love. They're amazing. Next is... Mon Mothma. 
Again, she's another female character who has a... She was the only other female in, that had lions in the original trilogy. It's true. It's pretty sad, but it's true. And I did choose the version of her from the original trilogy. From Return of the Jedi, yeah. Uh, the design was by Aggie Gerard Rogers, and it, again... The women wear very draped. Everybody wears draped outfits. They do. Outfits. Like, and, boom, it's the tablecloth. You're good to go. But this looks very similar to Leia's celebration dress as far as making the make of it. it. It has the same flow to it with the sleeves, with the gown. It's just in a different fabric. And I especially loved the silver rope. It reminded yeah, the jewelry. me of Greek. Yeah, kind of like a Greek kind of... Uh... Exactly. Uh, I don't know what I know what you're talking about. I just can't think of what they're called. But the yes, the robes, the Greek robes, um, very the, Greek. Uh, and also, she does appear also in uh, Revenge of the Sith, and she does appear in uh, Rogue One as well. Same with Bale. Uh, you know, her costume in Revenge of the Sith is a little more detail orientated, but it still keeps the design of the colors and the silver and everything. Uh, yeah, this dress, while it is very plain, the only thing that really makes it stand out is the jewelry itself. Uh, it tells you that she's not there to be looked at. She's there for you to take her seriously. Yeah, she's there because, you know, it basically is like, here's my credentials. Right, <laughs> Let me exactly. walk to the door. Bing, bing, bong. Hello. Here's your orders. <laughs> yes. All right, next off is Zam Wazell, who is a bounty hunter from episode two. And she is the only other female besides Captain Phasma to be a bad guy and have something to do with the plot. That's pretty intense. When and you that was from episode it. two. Right. Like, how sad is that? If you look at it, there were some redeeming qualities in the prequels. And the fact that Lucas really tried to incorporate a few more women, since that was the number one criticism from yeah. the original trilogy, is... I feel a good move. It's something that Marvel's still scared to do is make mm -hmm. females into villains. And people are scared to make women bad guys yeah. for some reason. If it's not a Disney line, a Disney animated film, it's probably a dude. Yeah. Um, this is the bounty hunter, if you remember from episode two. She's in league with Django and she sends the, the poisonous slug things to go kill Padme. Um, she eventually gets her arm cut off by Obi-Wan and then gets killed by Django Fett. Yes. This, excuse me, this outfit, I love this outfit because it's a, it's a deep purple. It kind of can blend in with the Coruscant nightlife. It's not, you know, a, a bright outfit. Like Boba Fett wears primarily greens and reds. But it works on like a desert planet. In, it does. Uh, in this Ruben. works for like a nightlife cityscape exactly. planet. Um, I like that she has a helmet and she has a veil too because you don't... Yes. You know, in the beginning, Obi Wan and Anakin don't know if it's. They automatically assume it's a guy because yeah. she has her veil up for most of their pursuit, and they find out. Oh no, females, women can be bounty hunters too, guys. Oh no, um, this is a really cool outfit. Yeah. and the more I look at it, the more I want to cosplay it. I love the purple leather work on it. I love the patchwork butt skirt. I <laughs> that's what it is. It yeah. doesn't go all the way around. It's a but it's, skirt. It's a bunch of patches and yeah, it's, and they're sewn together. And, it yeah. looks so cool. She has a bunch of armor on her, uh, on her boots shins and, and her on her gloves. arms. Yeah. Uh, and she has these two tubes that because I know a lot about the character because I'm a see, geek. Look, uh, um, and those help her breathe because she's an alien species as well. Um, so she's just a cool character. I liked. It. I kind of am sad they killed her off so soon, but. She was interesting. I liked her. Agreed. Next. Next is one of my favorite Jedi, yeah. Ayla Sakura. She is also designed by Trisha Bigger. This was originally a expanded universe character that came into the fold very late in the game, in post-production even. Yeah. Um, she was played by Amy Allen, who was a visual effects supervisor, I think, at ILM. She worked for ILM, I'm pretty sure. That's really cool. And so like, hey, would be this character for, you know, three scenes and paint you blue and give you a headpiece? And she gained a huge following after that. Yeah, absolutely. Now she is in uh, the... The Clone Wars yeah. TV show. Um, she, of course, gets killed off in episode three. Um, but she has a few episodes in the Clone Wars and various comic adaptations. Um, she's a Twi'lek, which is the first kind of Twi'lek Jedi we've seen. Also, the very first Twi'lek on our list, Tenshin and Twink. Wink. Yes. Um, you know, mostly Twi'lek women are very impressed in their culture and they're, you know, sold off to slavery or dancers or whatever. You don't see them As Jedi. become Jedi. Yeah. 
and there's even a dress in one of the comic books. A little boy says, you can't be a Jedi, you're a female in a Twilight. And she's like, bitch, hold my lightsaber. <laughs> um, I'll cut you. I'll cut you. But she's blue, she's beautiful. I like that it's not a traditional Jedi robe. No, It's very much not. with her culture and mixed in with, you know, Jedi. Honestly, I feel like that's something important that they don't touch on very much is, you know, we see a lot of human Jedi and they embrace the robes right away. They they kind of disregard some of their other human culture, whereas here she is definitely a Twilight first, Jedi second. Yeah. And that I appreciate that because you, you're obviously your race, your species longer than you are part of this religion. Yes. Um, that's the same, you know, to say for... Shakti and uh, Ahsoka Tano and Barisafi and Luminara, all these great, you know, alien creatures and alien... Mostly you know, women. Mostly women have these beautiful outfits um, that very much represent kind of their culture as well. Yes. Next up is Mas Ameda. You don't really remember him. He's got a ton of detail on him. Ton of. He's the man. He's insane. the blue guy with the horns who... Is Palpatine's aide in yes. episode two and three, and then he's Chancellor Valorum's aide in episode one. See, now you remember him, but yeah. it just, the name doesn't stick. Yeah, you're just like, who? Exactly. Um, I don't think, he's never even really named in the movies. He's named in the Clone Wars, and yeah. that's, <laughs> that's it. But he looks, he looks absolutely foreboding. Absolutely insane. Like yeah. that, that is a creature that will haunt my dreams. Yes. Yeah. Who has top horns and like bottom horns? Bottom to, floppy horns. Uh, right. Bottom horns are floppy, top horns pointy. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but his costume in episode three we picked because he has a really gorgeous kind of that tan color, almost leather like a piece. Saddle. Yeah, right? And I say that with the utmost respect because that yeah. looks pretty cool. He's a very regal, he's, you know, Palpatine's a artery too. Yeah. It's it's one of those things where a lot of these background characters actually have a lot of detail in their costumes that are sadly overlooked because they get three seconds of screen time. Yeah. Which sucks. But, you know, we have all these, you know, statues and toys and whatever. But this guy... Say what you want about the prequels. But the costumes Trisha were... bigger was yeah. all in. Which, speaking of which, we'll be doing a prequel something something Eventually. soon. Eventually. So, mm-hmm. watch out for that. Mm-hmm. But this one, he, you know, has more darker colors than, I think, the previous uh, movies as well. He has more of a flowy kind of cape robe. Yeah. He's Palpatine's aide. He knows what's going with Palpatine. He, he's in, he knows what's going on. Right. He's so, one of the very few. Nobody yes. really knows the whole plan. No one. He does. And he, he knows bits and pieces of what will be, you know, the Empire, but he was cool. I liked him. Absolutely. So. Next up. Greedo. If you are not familiar with Greedo, he is... A Rodian. And yes. he's the man who, um, <laughs> unfortunately faced off against uh, Han Solo in episode four. He, if you have seen the originals, he didn't even get a shot off. No, you know? Han shot first. A, a Han shot only. Like I that's... always, I always shoot first. <laughs> I try. <laughs> so does it work out for you? Most of the time. Okay, good. I'm most of the time. Proud of you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so this is a really cool rubber latex mask put over you know, an obvious actor, and they created a whole separate language just for him, mm-hmm. which was really impressive as well. Looking at the mask, there are a ton of sculpted details in it that you wanted to really see on a ton of movies that came out yeah. in the 1970s. So a lot of effort went into Greedo, even though the designer, John Molo, knew that he was going to be killed off in the scene that he appears in. Yeah. You know, he is only in this one thing and all of, you know, I guess at this point it's canon Star Wars. Yeah, it's canon. So, I just meant like he doesn't appear anywhere else in oh, canon. Oh, uh, well, he's in the Clone Wars. Oh, is he? Yeah. Okay. He has a few episodes in I'm the Clone so Wars. Sorry. He's young Greedo there. Oh, okay. Um, but I like this design because he's in like a bright orange vest. He's in like a light kind of blue one jumpsuit flight suit like he's supposed to be a bounty hunter which i kind of think like people kind of want to blend in he's just like a construction worker well, like look at he's, his wearing face. A bright... he's already a sore thumb in most of the galaxy he is it's not like... there's lots of rodians though on tatooine which is where he's at but yeah like you know you go to but not in this cantina he's the only one in no this he's, there's like maybe one so more he sticks out it. already there um he i also like this design because you know the black eyes this kind of reminds me of what George's envision was for, like, his take on, like, little green men from Mars. I think that's you a know, good idea. Between this and Yoda, absolutely. This Yoda and then the Cantina band members yeah. is all kind of, like, 
how he envisioned the stereotypical men from Mars. I like that a um, lot. I like that he has kind of elf pointy ears. His well, it's kind of weird. He's and like that two ears. Back to Yoda. Yeah, he does. It, well, he has like these uh, the antenna. rounded antennae ears, and then he has elf like Spock ears kind yes. of on the side. I mean, Spock has bigger ears than normal elves, and this is more Spock related. So. It is, um, but yeah, he's a great character. I like Rodians; they're very cool, and so yeah, he's very alien and grotesque, and he is. I like him. Next up is Boba Fett, also originally designed by John Mullo in uh, Empire Strikes Back. Now, but... do not give us hate on putting him in here because they're like, "Oh, Boba Fett's a main character." He Bitch is where? not. Bitch where? He is not. He no. appears in like a scene and a half in Empire. He has an action scene kind of in Return and then he's swallowed by a toothy sand vagina. So <laughs> you cannot tell me in yeah. that scenario he's a hero, he's a main character. Yes, later on fans and writers have developed him way more and he's a lot yes. cooler than he was in the 80s. But let's face it, this dude did nothing in yeah. the 80s. He was a side character. Yes. That being said, he's he was cool one of the cooler side, side characters. Character, which is probably why fans expanded He had a him. fucking jetpack with a missile on it. Yeah. Which cool he never used that? during battle, which was stupid. Right. He could have gotten out of this. Right. Like, giant. boom, goodbye. Um, he has a bunch of wrist rockets, flamethrowers, guns, pistols, a little capelet thing. He has Wookiee braids that he's killed. He has a bunch of stuff. And the Mandalorian armor has always been one of my favorite sets of armor because I feel like it is the most practical and also protective. Yes. You, like, when I look at the Stormtroopers, you obviously can't get around. You have limited sight and limited mobility. That yeah. is probably... So they miss everything. When they, it's they probably shoot. why they're just not that great of an army. They're better as a massive... Mm -hmm. Force, whereas these bounty hunter bounty hunters, especially the Mandalorians, can get around a lot better, and I feel like they mixed the whole. They made both practical and aesthetic work. Yes, um, I mean, I think that we always have an air of mystery to characters that wear helmets. Yes, um, I mean, you know, and Boba I, definitely has the mystery. He does. Him. him, Captain Phasma, all these characters that wear helmets throughout the whole entire you know duration of their films. We're like, we want to learn more about them. We yes. want to know what they look like. What's their backstory? And the best we got was, you know, five-year-old Boba Fett in... Who was like ten. What? Okay, I'm sorry. I don't judge age on kids well. <laughs> five-year-old Boba Fett. I've never had that one That pilots of those. the slave one. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> anyway. No, but Boba that's Fett... That's the closest we get. Yeah. Um, he's expanded more in the Clone Wars, obviously, and he gets more armor that's reminiscent of this. Uh, before the Clone Wars were canceled, they were going to actually have him be Boba Fett, but that got canceled because Disney sucks. Um, but this, you know, character very much stands the test of time where people go, Star Wars, they go, Darth Vader, Chewbacca, Boba Fett, they Yoda, name like, Yoda, yeah. they name these characters, even though Boba Fett did Usually absolutely in the top jack ten shit. of the characters people name off. So yeah, he didn't do he, anything. For some reason, he is the bounty hunter that's stuck in people's heads and not the black tin man guy. <laughs> yeah. IG-88. Oh, <laughs> He looks like the Tin Man, he didn't except do anything. he was black instead of silver. Like, that's yeah. it. That's um, it. But, I mean, Boba Fett, like I said, is a minor character. Too bad. So sad. He's still Sorry, a minor guys. character for a lot of stuff. So, but, whatever. We're going to move on to somebody else who was in Return of the Jedi. Yeah. And she is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. She is Ula. The Twi'lek slave girl of Jabba the Hutt. She's the green one. She is like the one nets. that tries to rebel and escape. And, and it doesn't eaten. doesn't work out too well for no. her, but she tried. She she tried to get A out for of effort. It. A I, for I effort. Mean, That's all I can give her is A for effort. She knew she wasn't going to win or actually escape. She put up a fight and she knew she was gonna lose. But it was more important to her for integrity to death. Yeah. To have to die than to be Jabba's slave any longer. Yeah, it um she was the first female Twilight that we have seen in Star Wars. Uh the first male we saw was Big Fortuna and then shortly after was Ula. Um and you see her and she's, you know, this green creature and she looks up, she has like beautiful like drag queen makeup. She has like three or four eyeshadows on her. Yes. Um she uh, we don't know really much about her, but she has, you know, this is the first time we also see slavery in Star Wars. Yeah. Is with her. Um, and we can tell, you know, if she has a chain around her neck, she's in nothing but like a fishnet onesie, which is very revealing. You can see everything. Yeah. People want to give Leia 
a lot of shit for that outfit, but Ula's is probably it's worse more revealing. because it's it doesn't cover you. No, it doesn't. You can see everything. Um, and, you know, this character, like I said, was a great addition. Uh, she had a really striking look. At when he, I love the head tails. This was my first introduction to a Twi'lek. Yes. And I love the Twi'lek species. Um, they are really cool. The fact that they come in many different colors is yes, very reminiscent of shapes, sizes, everything. As well as the fact that males and females have different, uh, social significant statuses. different social statuses as well as physical appearances. Yes. You know, just earlier you were explaining to me they have different ears. Mm -hmm. and that's yeah, women really have weird. the cone ears, men have kind of elf pointy or ears. It's um, crazy. And fun fact for the actress who played her, Kimmy Taylor... She came back in the 90s to reprise this role, wore the same costume from the 80s. She could fit into it to do additional scenes for the special edition and all that good stuff. So, one, kudos to her. Secondly, I mean, this is a character that has actually expanded a lot. They have now busts of this character. They have figures. They have maquettes of a character that maybe had altogether five minutes of screen time. I appreciate the fact that this character was not really supposed to be heroic or likable. She was just supposed to, you know, show in the couple minutes of screen time that she had a personality to go along with mm -hmm. the, the dancing and the slavery. Yeah. And people have just flocked to her. They're like, no, 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 that is heroic. Yeah, that's a cool character. So mm -hmm. we like her. And finally, this is our last person. Last one. So we have Tion Meaden. And you're like... Who the hell is that? He was the administrator in episode three. He has 30 seconds of screen time, maybe. Yeah. So less than a lot of these characters we've had on this list so far. He looks like a regal version of Dead Man, Boston brand from oh, okay. uh, DC. I can he see that. He wears a red outfit just like Boston brand does. He is white with uh, reddish eyes. Uh, just reddish, you know, circles around mm -hmm. the eyes and then blacked out eyes completely. So he looks to me more like uh, Boston Brand than too many other things that yes. I've seen. Yes. Um, he is the, he, like I said, he's the administrator who greets Obi-Wan Kenobi on Utapau and says, you know, Grievous is here, help us. And, and that's, that's it. all we see of him. That's it. The end. His but, species, though, are so cool. They have these ridges that are down the face that actually George Lucas added because he goes, you know, originally they didn't have that. They had their original sculpt, but the no ridges. And he goes, let me just try, try this. And then that's how you got the lines. Yes. Um, it have... makes them incredibly different from yes. other creatures. If you look at just the way humans are made, we are very rarely symmetrical like that. Mm -hmm. And that creates a mathematical portion in his creation, which, if you think about it, is very cool. Yes. Um... And I love his costume. Uh, Trisha Bigger, again, did this costume. For a character that had 30 seconds of screen time, he has a beautiful costume. He has a high collar that goes up to the tip of his ears. It doesn't flare out like most collars do. No, it it's, comes in. It's pressed against the face. It's yeah. very flush against his cheeks and the back it makes of his, his head. It makes his face seem slimmer, almost. It it's does. kind of like a big, it's kind of like contour. I imagine him, like, even though I'm just staring at a picture and I'm not standing next to the man, I imagine him hovering over me. Like, he would oh, be he's seven super or tall. eight foot tall. Yes, he's exactly. taller than Obi-Wan Kenobi. And he has a cane. He's about like six and a half feet tall, I think. He's, he's really he's tall. He's very amber-colored nails. Yes. He's very regal. You can tell he has a purpose on this planet, and he has a purpose in society. Um, it's a red. It's very slimming, too. It's not like a one-piece thing. You know, it kind of mm -hmm. just a one kind of a tube of red that has these almost, I guess, triangle slits that have silver um, medallion pieces on them. Yeah. And he has a great black belt. He's definitely more decorative than he is functional. Yes. But it's because he has some sort of hierarchy. Yes. Uh, and the the sleeves also are kind of a, a textured as well. Like the whole costume is yeah. really pretty. It is. And so that's why I'm like, he's kind of cool. And he has 30 seconds of screen time, but he has Absolutely. an impact on things. So he does. He's an action figure. Well, that finishes up our list of the top 10 Favorites, yes. Star Wars characters, the looks of our all of our side characters and, you know, minor characters. What are some costumes that you really liked from Star Wars? Be sure to comment below. There are like three Jedi I wanted to put on here, but I didn't have time to. I wanted to put Shock T on there, but 
I, I couldn't. There was a few other people that I'm like, I don't want to put you on there, yeah. but I couldn't do it. We could probably do a part two in yeah. a little while, so give us some ideas. We'll definitely add them to it. Want to see another episode of Costume Couture? You're always welcome to put ideas in the comments as well. Yes, so we encourage interaction. We want to talk to you guys. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe always. Yes, and don't forget we have a Patreon as well. We'll link that down below. So until next time, guys, may the force be with you. No, no! You put your vagina symbol away. You're doing it too! Oh, damn it! <laughs> oh! No. No. I'm so ashamed now. <laughs> that's what dirty feels like. Like that's new to you. Whoa.